Hi everyone. Um, let me know if you can hear me and if everything is working. This is my first time doing this alone, so I'm scared. So if everyone can listen to me correctly. Yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so if anyone hasn't been to any of our streams yet, I uh, just wanted to say a little bit about how this works. Basically, uh, Daniel Stewart, Madison Irwin, and me are doing feedback sessions. We are doing first uh, feedback for a selected group. Awesome. Thank you, Sherry. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, we're doing first uh, feedback for a selected group that we have uh, for the next three months on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. And then if there is time at the end of the stream, we can open it up for anyone else who also wants uh, feedback, if we have time, depends on the time, because sometimes these sessions can run very, very, very long. So yeah, I see a lot of people here. So, and I already see two of mine, so awesome. Uh, okay, let's get started with the first feedback. So, I think we're gonna start with Shari since I saw you first. And if you need anything, you can just type it in this chat. I think I'm gonna keep track of this one instead of Discord. Um, and speaking of Discord, for anyone who is not in our server channel, um, here is the link. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like for anyone who's been to the Animation Mentor dailies, it's basically the same idea. Uh, it's just the three of us and we open it up to not just people from AM, uh, mainly because, yeah, we felt like it would be better to also let other people get feedback, uh, not just keep it in the AM community. And yes, we want all the power. <laughs> cool. So, uh, Shari, if you're good, we can start with your feedback. So, uh, I was checking uh, the three students that we have today uh, earlier, so that's why if you see notes before, that's um, why. But let's play this. Holy cow, this is your room? Can you guys hear that audio? Just to double check. And let me know if it's too loud or anything. Holy cow, this is your room? Cool. So I don't know how much delay there is. So um for feedback, uh you can post it in the feedback channel in Discord, but I haven't opened it yet to for other people because I don't know how long this will run. So at the end of um these three students, if there's time, I will open it up for extra feedback. But if there's time, I also already have one in line uh, from before. So we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Shari, this, yeah, no problem. Uh, this is looking this is super cool. I love it. I do have, like, as you can see, Holy a few cow. notes. I'm going to mute this because I'm not going to focus on the audio for now. Um, I think you're in a good spot to at least when you are ready start splining uh, sorry start uh doing another polish pass on this i can't remember exactly if you were already polishing or if you were in spline um no it says half spline okay uh i think this part is ready to just whatever notes i give you just put them into polish after you finish splining the rest but first uh the first thing that I wanted to mention is that I would actually try and move the framing a little bit more screen right. And the main reason for that is that right now it doesn't feel like things fall in the thirds of the screen. And I think it would look very, very nice if things were on thirds. So for example, here, the center of the screen is roughly around here. And that's my amazing uh, straight line. So if the characters were a little bit more in this area, so their faces here, I think it would be a little bit more nicely centered. But the main reason why I would recommend framing it a little bit, and again, if your mentor on this shot told you for some reason not to do that, then don't mind me. But the reason is, especially when I saw this at the end, she 
feels a little bit too far to screen uh, left. And so if this was a little bit more there, she would fall a little bit more on a third and even he would do as well. Um, and also because everything would be a little bit more screen right, you would be able to potentially position this more screen uh, left. And the reason why I'm saying is that right now she feels very awkward in how she grabs it because it's very, hey, Celia, uh, my, hey, mom, I'm famous. Uh, she feels a little bit awkward in how she grabs it. So I feel that if that is a, that, what is it called? A maze? Uh, I can't remember the names of things. The hammer thingy. Uh, it's a little bit more screen left. You can pose her in a little bit of a more comfortable position and you won't have to have it so um, tight to her body. Plus, you would be avoiding this straight line that is forming with the arm. And that would also potentially, around here, also give you the chance to have this a little bit more relaxed. So instead of being so close to the body, having a little bit more negative space between the arm and the body. And if like you feel like this doesn't read so well, what you can do is just um, make the pole part a little bit longer. And that way it will also um, help you to pose that a little bit more comfortably. If I'm going too fast or you need to ask any questions, feel free. I'm sorry, I need to just double check. No one is writing anything on Discord. Just, okay, cool. Everyone write in the chat because everything is happening so fast. I'm trying to keep up. Hey, Brian. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to say your name. Not in, I don't know. He, I know him because he's one of my students from my country, Argentina. Yay. So, Another, a few of the other notes that I wrote here, just so that we go over this first. I would try to start posing the hands, <laughs> start posing the hands a little bit more defined. Particularly this one, it feels like it goes through the arm and it also doesn't feel too appealing. So maybe what you could do is stick the thumb out. Let me try another color stick the thumb out a little bit more and try to curve those fingers so that it feels like she's wrapping around his uh, waist, so her chest. And particularly all around here, it feels like you could pose that a little bit more. And the same thing about the hands on him right now. Hey, Luis. Um, they are very much... Uh, like the uh, this part of the hand is too much towards camera. So what I would do is try to maybe rotate it a little bit, maybe that way, so that we see a little bit of a different part of the hand and not just completely this because uh, three quarters or an angle turns to be a little bit better. Hi, Samala. Hi, everyone. And then for this, this might be a bit of a big note, but I would try it out and see if it works. Try it kind of quickly. I would try to have her, maybe even starting from her hips, but mostly her head, a little bit more screen left so that there's a little bit more negative space between them in this particular pose, like around this part. Um, for two reasons. One, it will help us read her better, but also it feels like they might be a little bit too unbalanced to screen right right now. Hey, um, so if you can like keep the idea of that roundness that you have with the body, just a little bit more screen left. And I think that's going to help with the pose and him not being in the middle of her eye. And Speaking of eyes, because I've just noticed something, maybe we could we could see a little bit more of his eye, just a little bit more, because um, right now we can barely notice it. And so even though, yes, considering his head angle and where he's looking at, we wouldn't see it in real life. But if we see it a little bit more, it tends to be more appealing. And 
this is more of a personal note in terms of how what I would try when uh they are walking in, I would consider making her look at him all the time, and the reason why is because if I'm thinking about the subtext of this part of what is happening, she knows what's about to happen. She knows what's in the room and what she's going to do to him. So I would think that maybe she's looking more at him, trying to see his reaction and see what he's feeling and what he's going through and trying to see, okay, when is the perfect moment? So I would consider, um, instead of her looking at the room, which she already knows, and she's already opened the the door and everything, looking at him. And that could also make her slightly unnerving, slightly like making the whole shot a little bit more uneasy so that it doesn't feel like she's, it's like she seems nice, but there's something else going on behind it. Then here, uh, I would try maybe not to lower him so much, especially because he doesn't seem to drop from very high and he drops too much. So for me, it was a little bit too distracting because my eye had to move too much. And also, if you turn on the safe zone in Maya, you're probably going to get it kind of up to there. And so it's already passing that safe zone. So it would be better if he, he were a little bit higher up, not necessarily with his um, hips, but more with the body angle. It feels like he crouches a little bit too much in terms of his chest. And then the other comments that I mainly have, <clears throat> aside from knee pops um, and things that you will figure out and sort out in Polish, it's arcs. Right now, I only track this one, but I've noticed another one. This arc of this hand could be a little bit better particularly not just the arc, but the spacing as well. If we turn on ghosting, and let me see if I can zoom in and make this work. Suddenly she starts going down with her arm and then on this frame she goes up and then she starts going down again and then she stops. So what I would do is maybe keep her going up for a little bit longer all around here. And for this, I would go past the door and then grab, because right now it feels very controlled. Like she don't, she's not even looking at the, at the door and she knows exactly where to stop to pull it. So if she goes a little bit past and then grabs it and pulls it, it's going to allow you to get a bigger arc and it's also going to make it flow a little bit nicer. So I would try to get basically the arc to be something like this. And I think that's um, going to look very nicely. Um, I'm going to copy all the questions that we get in a notepad and answer them in a little bit. But I promise I am keeping track of your questions. Um, another part where I would work on the arc is oops, here. So if you see what this wrist is doing, see how suddenly it goes too much down and screen right, and then it goes screen left. Oops, there we go, here. So what I would do maybe is instead of here 
already rotating the wrist, I would keep it there in like close to his body for a little bit longer with the same angle. And then maybe here, this hand will be a little bit closer to the body. So that allows you to have this hand over here. And if I turn off ghosting, this will make more sense. So this type of motion. And so you go, basically your arc is going to just be this instead of this. I, I, it's basically just simplifying it so that we pay attention to the things that we need. Because right now what's happening is that it feels like things are flickering. And our attention goes there, but it's not where we need it to be. And since I saw this here, um, once you go into adding more bent bows, because I think I think you I saw some, but um, at some point you need to do a bent bow pass for the arms and potentially the legs, because this character's legs are a little bit weird. I would try to avoid places like this, frames in which the lower arm and the upper arm are exactly in the same place. So if whatever it is that you need to do, I would potentially here, considering the spacing, how it suddenly goes, um, it gets bigger in just one frame, I would slightly move this arm, this hand here, so that we can see that upper arm. Plus, I would also use the bend bows to round this a little bit more nicely. His Aya's arms are just insane. And then for arcs, I was tracking his nose in this section. Right now, if I play it, it feels, again, a little bit too complicated the way he does his arc. It goes up and then down and to the side. So let me see if you can see it. It's not very visible, but you're kind of doing this type of arc. I would try to simplify that. So here, maybe he's still a little bit more to the side so that that arc is a little bit cleaner. And then I would try potentially here um rotating his head a little bit more screen right so that again his arc is a little bit bigger and he kind of overshoots uh screen right and back And then potentially here, when he goes up and down, he's only se he only seems to be tied at the wrists, but he has this type of mobility. So it would be nice if after he falls, the hands um, overshoot down a little bit so that they are not completely glued to his body all the time. So maybe after he reaches the lowest point, those hands move a little bit further down. Again, once you move him a little bit higher up, this is going to also be easier to do because right now it's happening all so close to the edge of the screen that it gets a little bit tricky. But once you adjust that, that's going to be okay. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to post them. See if I had written anything else. No, oh, okay. So, another reason why I wouldn't have him so low, even in terms of the translation uh, Y in the hips is because you're starting to get these cuts of the leg and the uh, 
torso, which just happened because kind of the rig is not helping you. So if you just tone it down a little bit, I think that's going to help. I think when he's coming up, there's, it could be um, around here, it could be just a matter of the rotations of the hips, or it could be the legs that are doing something weird, but it feels a little bit odd if you track this edge. It kind of just goes down and then it goes screen left and then it goes screen right. Again, it feels like for one frame, it just goes screen um, left. It could be just a matter of the rotations of the hips. It feels like if you check your curves, check like all the rotations, you might have some weird thing happening there. And if it's all clean, then it could be just the leg that suddenly maybe moved and it's creating that effect. And then, when he comes up, I would overshoot his body up and down a little bit. Right now it feels very controlled, especially because he's super excited and has a lot of energy, um, in, especially in how the torso comes up, but the hips go up and they just stay here. Once they've reached this, they just stay there. So I would overshoot it a little bit more so that it feels um, a little bit more energetic and bouncy. Yeah, there's something happening with, I think, the rotations of the body, basically, because if you track this edge in all of this area, suddenly it changes the shape in just one frame. Let me turn this off. It goes from this to this. So I would just double check what's happening with your rotations. It could be your rotations in X on the... Um, torso controls or if you use if you, if you can't find anything I know that these rigs have some kind of sculpt controls on the chest that you can adjust a little bit so that if nothing else works you can just cheat it when nothing works that's the only option Right now he's closing his eyes only for two frames, which is like best a basic blink. Um, I would probably already close his eyes around frame 68 and I wouldn't open them maybe until frame 80, just because he's in a weird position and it's all happening so fast that first our head wouldn't be able to process all the images that are happening with us moving so fast and also because suddenly you get this where it's just the white of the eye and it's not very appealing so if you just close it it gets rid of that problem and let me just quickly check yeah nothing is burning no one is telling me that Things are going terribly wrong. Awesome. Um, and then 
the other thing that I would do is basically uh, knee pop pass just because there's a few areas where you have a few pops not just knee pops but the arms as well so for example here if we see her arm on her uh, screen left arm suddenly here it pops on one frame so you need to just double check what's happening there and then knee pops and things that are common in spline so just double check them for example here and then it kind of wiggles Let me see it with the audio just to see where it is that he speaks. Holy. Holy so, right now, what I feel. is that he doesn't really have that much time to process and he's already reacting so I'm trying to think if there's a way maybe a possibility that I would try is this blink he has and this look towards the room maybe making this two frames earlier so that there's a little bit more time for him to look around and react And then for her, I feel like right now her smile feels a little bit too pushed. I would try to get the mouth corner to be around here. I think it will feel a little bit more natural for Aya. And then in terms of the face, you could push this a little bit more by slightly lowering this uh, eyelid. I think you mentioned that you were not doing the, like the faces were still in stepped. So I don't think I have to comment on them. There's something though with Jules, he feels a little bit off model and something weird happening here where his jaw kind of comes in a little bit too much there's like this roundness to his jaw that feels a little bit weird it could be just the rig doing weird things but or it could be something else but maybe if it's something that you did manually i would tone it down a little bit because on this side it works but on this one, it starts to feel like his skull is very, what's the word, the cartoon-like, like this is his skull. So I w if it's something that you did, I would tone it down. And if it's not, then maybe at the end, you can just use some blend shapes to fix it. Then around here, check this knee. It feels like it's kind of wobbling and um, jittering a little bit. B 
be careful here, it feels like he's going through her leg. And around here, you're having a tangent on this two, three, almost four frames, where it feels like um, he's touching his leg only in that one tiny point. So either add a little bit more negative space with the legs or remove it. Like one or of the two, but not right there. And then, yeah, if you move this object a little bit more to screen left, like I mentioned before, it's going to allow you to create a nicer arc with the wrist. So I would definitely try that. And maybe for these, this pose in particular, once she grabs it, I would move this shoulder a little bit higher and this one a little bit lower so that it flows from one to the other a little bit more. Then be careful when he's stepping to the side. It doesn't feel like there was a weight shift before he moved. And right now, he just stepped on this leg here. And now he's stepping onto the other. But I don't see his weight shifting. Because for him to be able to lift this leg, he should actually move his body more screen left. So what you could do is as he's coming up, when his leg, like basically all of his weight right now is on his screen right, uh, right leg, I would already move the, le the other leg so that by frame 87, his leg is already on this final position. And from like 87, Sorry, from yeah, 87 to 91, he shifts his weight a little bit more screen left. And oops, be careful here. You're going to have a leg knee pop. And then this is mostly for polish, but just so that you are aware. Um, you can slightly offset your shoulders so that they don't go up and down exactly at the same time. Slightly. It's like you can basically offset the in-betweens. It's kind of like when you offset the blink. It's the same idea, but very, very slightly. And here his body's coming down and his hands are also coming down. I know that this is already from the next part, but just make sure that the body doesn't move as a unit so that everything moves down. His body is coming down, maybe his hands drag ever so slightly up. And around here, when he's walking, Maybe you can add a little bit more of rotation Y on the chest, just a little bit, so that we feel this contrapposto thingy a little bit more. Just a tiny bit more.
and then once you get into polish this is a note more for polish remember to track everything even the tip of his toes because right now the arcs are not very arky like they could be a little bit better because right now it's going up down and then suddenly it starts going up so that's something that potentially the, the easier fix would be to not have it come down so much here that way you don't need to um, bounce so much with the foot and then all around this you can add again for polish a little bit more nuance to the fingers so that they're not always in the same pose but maybe at some point they relax a bit and then they tense a bit just a little bit more information there so that they're not always in the same pose be careful around here it feels from frames 110 to 119 like her hips are rotating but it's just the hips that are rotating nothing else like the chest is not rotating the like it meant like yes the chest is rotating a little bit but it feels like she was already in the pose that she needed by frame 114 so maybe that rotation i would like that ry i would have it finish around 114 so that it doesn't feel like she got there and then just her body is rotating but nothing else is happening And when she grabs this thing, what would be nice is let's say it's hanging from a thing here or somewhere around there. As she grabs it, she kind of pushes it a little bit and then grabs it. Because right now she grabs it, but that thing is completely stuck. She has to kind of work her hand around it and grab it but if she just pushes it a little bit and then pulls i think um it's gonna have a nice interactivity with the object It feels like the rotation in C that she has here on the head around this part, it suddenly rotates too much in these frames. It might be a mix of all the rotations, but basically when I play it on these frames, like let me play it a little bit more. It just feels like it's happening very fast in here it might be rc and rx i would just maybe have that rotation over a few more frames maybe it started two frames earlier so that it doesn't feel so quick And when he's, what is he saying? Just, I want to double check again. Holy cow, this is your room? Okay, he's clearly smelling, which was what I thought he was doing. That's great. I would 
try to get a bigger arc on the way he smells. Like I know that you haven't gotten past 125, but right now two things are happening. As he's walking, he, his head rotations seem very stuck in the same pose and the same happens when he's smelling. So maybe as he's walking, you can add a little bit more rotation, not not as much as I'm doing right now, but a little bit more rotation in Z and the same here so that it doesn't feel basically like he's stuck in the same angle all the time. And when he's smelling, I would try to get maybe a bigger arc with the face. And it's just, in the rotation in Y for now. Like around here, it seems like his head wants to go that way and suddenly it turns with his body. So here I would keep him rotating screen right and then rotate screen left and getting that nice arc. Because right now the nose moves very diagonally. So it would be nice if he had a little bit more of an, an arc to that motion. And be careful here when you get to that, that it feels very IK. Need to add a little bit more connectivity to that wrist. But let me just move it up to here. Holy cow, this is your room? I think that's all I have for now. Do you have any questions about this or the shot in general or something? I'm gonna check Discord. Anyone left comments? Not good. <laughs> awesome. I hope they help. Um, next time I think you're with Madison, so you're gonna get super cool notes too with whatever you show. So. Cool. So yeah, if you don't have any questions, I'll go over the other question. Hey, how's it going? Good to know. Um, It's honestly up to you, up to whatever you prefer, because you could, if you want, next time, just show the rest of the spline. I personally like applying the notes first, just because when I have them fresh, I remember them. If I wait for too long, let's say I wait a week, I will forget half of the notes, what they meant. So it's up to you, whatever you prefer. If you want to do it, like the thing is, let's say you do the notes. Next time you should not just show the notes, you should show the notes and something else. So potentially if you want, you can do the notes later, but like next week I wouldn't just show the notes. If you're, let's say you're only focusing on this first 125 frames, you have to do the notes and the polish or the notes and the rest of the spline or like the next 100 frame spline so that you keep going and it's not just, oh, I apply the notes. I, I try to do a little bit more than just that. It's a very long shot because it's 321 frames. So if you just say you apply the notes and then you do the next 100 frames, that's more than okay. Because you also already have kind of like a spline pass on everything, so you could just do a sharper spline pass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's gonna look cool, so you got this. Don't worry. Cool, awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be. It, it's not gonna be so hard to spline when it's all on twos. It's like you just put some music or some movie in the background, and it's all super cool. Yeah, no problem. So let me just answer this question before I forget that it existed, and then we'll go to the next review. So the question is. When waiting for a large client to start a project that they would like to hire me for, would it be wise to look for other revenue streams in the meantime or a way to make sure I'm available for them? That's a very tricky thing. Um, let, me, let me just reread it. So it depends basically on how sure you are that that client is going to hire you 
or if it's just that you're waiting for a reply to see if maybe they might hire you or not. Like, let's say you apply to, I don't know, Pixar, and you're waiting for them to see if they would hire you. Well, Pixar might take two months to reply to you, and maybe they say no. So I think it depends. If it's a sure thing that you know, for example, you you were told that you're most surely going to start in two months, then potentially you can just look for something freelance in two months. But if you don't know, like there, you're just waiting for them. Like if it's waiting for them to even confirm if you're going to start, then I would just look for other things. Like it also depends on two th it depends on two things one do you have the money to be able to afford not working for whatever amount of time they're not replying you or and um is the is the project so worth it that you want to make sure you're a hundred percent available because maybe there's another project that you could have applied that you're missing out because you're waiting for this one what if they say they say no because I know some people sometimes have uh, projects that they said, oh, we're going to start and we're going to start on this date. And then they don't start. And then they're like, oh, sorry. In the end, we found someone else. So I would say it's never a bad thing to look, keep looking. Even when you already have a job, it's not a bad thing to look what, for what else is out there. Never know. What if you got something better? As long as you don't breach your contract, it's all good. Okay, so um, I think, yeah, let's go with Anoush, because you sent the your shot first. Good to know which one is your username, because I was never going to figure it out. So I was looking at this earlier, that's why there's a few, yeah, no problem. Uh, there's a few notes already. I think overall it's going in a, the like right direction, there's a lot of good things that are happening and a few minor tweaks that I would do. But there is a big thing that I would change. Partially is the camera and partially is the setting. The reason uh, is right now what's happening is if I track his hips um, in the camera space, suddenly he starts going up. You see how in this frames, his hips go up and then he goes down again, which I understand it's most probably because of the camera, because there the camera starts to move. It could be also um, something that you need to check on the hips of the character. Maybe you did make them go higher up. In, if that's the case, then remove that because, yeah, I figure it feels like it's for from because of the camera. So what I would try as a fix is two things. First, I would make the swimming pool much larger for two reasons. One, he's very dumb right now because he's jumping very high into a tiny, tiny, tiny pool. He's like, it doesn't matter if he lands on the pool, he's not gonna have a good time. But the other reason is if that pool is bigger, even bigger than what I drew here, what that's going to allow you is to, <laughs> it's to, it's for us to look at the swimming pool a little bit earlier, because right now we understand what's happening a little bit too late. And even for him, he right now, he reacts to what's happening way too soon. Like he's, he jumped and he's in a mid jump and he already knows he's going to fail. It's a little bit too quickly. So what I would suggest is maybe even making this way bigger, way higher, so that when he jumps, he's actually jumping, like let's say you were trying to do a dive. I don't know which type of jump slash dive you were trying to do, but let's say it's a simple dive where he's just diving. He starts diving and he starts diving as normal. So the camera 
um, follows him as he's moving down. And once he's moving down a little bit, maybe we start seeing here the edge of the pool so that we see that there's something there and he's not landing. And he keeps falling. And once he, like, this could even be larger if you want. Um, once we see a little bit more of that, that's when he starts to react. When he and when he actually sees that he's not going to make it, because right now he he makes that like he reacts so quickly that we don't understand how quickly it was. Hey, how's it going? So I would basically delay that, and if you want to have him drop a little bit more, that's more than okay. Like if his has to be higher, um, I think it's going to read better and allow you to do also that cartoony feeling that you want a little bit more. Especially because right now, by the time the camera catches up to him and we see what's happening, we don't see it because the camera doesn't catch up to him so much. So we you need to give him time to drop and the camera catch up to his speed so that this is actually in frame and we see it happen. We see him flat on the ground from the first time. If that makes sense. And then minor, minor things, but when you go from the contact to, um, planting the foot, I would do it over one frame. Right now he's doing it over three frames. Already in this frame, he should already plant. Yeah, exactly. If you show the impact, it's going to be much nicer and work better. That's why he, you need enough time for the camera to catch up to him, to his speed. And from there, it will be easier. And what was it that I wanted to mention? Oh, here, yeah. So here, what's happening in this part, because like the run for me, it's working. There's a few things that I would adjust, but we'll talk about that later. But this first part, oh no, wait, before I forget, because I remember that I did. To leave, left some notes here. Um, around here, I would first uh, start landing his feet, not flat, but first the toes and then the heel. And then as he's coming up, I would, once he starts uh, stretching his legs, I would keep them stretched. Because right now he's he has to keep that stretch so that all the energy propels him up. And right now what's happening is in this frame only they get stretched. All of this, I would stretch them. And that's also going to read better. And I would try to avoid having the legs completely exactly in the same pose. So if you can just ever so slightly offset them, even if it's not what happens in real life, just a little bit so that they read better. But okay, let's go back to this one. So here what's happening is that once you reach kind of frame 17, it feels like the hips are stuck in place. Here they come down, but they are basically all the time in the same place. And when they start uh going forward you don't really have an anticipation doesn't mean you need to anticipate this much back and forward although um there was i can't remember who it was if it was i think it was um michael woodside on his instagram he posts he shared a video of someone doing the anticipation of a run and they went really really far back so you could do that but you don't need that in this case what you can do is for the anticipation, as he's doing this motion, he can come back. Yeah, it was it was 
crazy. Um, it can come back and then forward. So your anticipation is his body moving back and forward. Because right now you have the down, which is great, but you're missing a little bit more of preparation going backwards. And then around here, I would, what I would do, because his hips hit a wall and his back leg is moving backwards. But right now, all of his balance is actually on this one. I mean, even if you're sliding that leg, let's say you're not fully lifting it, the only thing that's keeping you in the ground is that front leg. And all of your body weight is behind. Like not all of it, but the most important thing, which are the hips, are behind. So from frames like 17 to 25, you could have the hips come forward a little bit more. And that also is going to allow you not to have them hit a wall so harsh. And then as he um, touches the ground with his toes and comes and, and presses a little bit, that's when you can settle back to this pose and bring the hips a little bit further screen left. This is, uh, if you ever watch the Pratt Pro stream, this is something that he mentions all the time. But try to pose the hands a little bit more because right now they're very much like mitten hands. They're giving this very stiff feel. So what you can do first, make sure that they are not going through the body. Like right now it feels like the thumb is going through the body. But also you can potentially just curl the fingers a little bit and maybe separate the index finger a little bit so that there's a little bit more of a relaxed feeling to it. Yeah, exactly. I should do the same thing and use that drink, that icon to drink water because I'm gonna forget but I'm better than than Bo at drinking water I've already had my fair share of tea tea is the best what's also going to help you when you move the hips forward in this section is right now what's happening is that it feels like also the chest kind of stops in that part and then keeps going. So already having that motion with the hips is going to help. But what I would also try to do, because right now it feels like the hands are moving forward both at the same time, um, the same amount and in the same direction. So what I would do is potentially just keep this hand a little bit far backwards. Like you don't need to bring it that much forward and you can bring the other one a little bit more forward. Cause you don't need both hands to do the same motion. The other one can just stay back. And this fist that you're doing, you can start it around frame 26 and by frame 31 he's already with the feet so that transition happens as the hand is moving rather than reaching there and closing so that it feels like it flows from one action to the other and then be careful with the arms are you using ik arms or are you using fk arms Okay, then be careful because at some points it feels a little bit IK-ish because see how it's completely stuck in this frame and then it pops back and 
you're kind of getting the same feeling around here. It feels like the hands are completely stuck in place. So a way to avoid that is as he's coming with the hand up, you can overshoot whoops, a little bit more up and then down. And then that's going to give you um, a less IK feel where it feels like the hand is just stuck in place, especially when he's just doing this. Like, even if you see me right now, my hand is kind of moving because it's really hard for me to completely get it stuck in one place. And this rotation that you have, I think it's probably starting on the hips, the rotation X. I feel like that's also causing this feeling of being the chest being, uh, getting kind of stuck in place and moving forward. So what I would do is if your RX, yeah, me too. Um, if that RX is right now something like this, what I would do is just soften it a little bit so that it starts a little bit sooner so that it doesn't feel like he just does. And yeah, um, especially what um, I know, I think I know who you are. Danish South, Kelt South, but I can't remember. Um, but what they are saying is very true that you can get into this pose much faster and it could be way snappier so like you could take right now it's taking you let's say from yeah around 30 30 frames to get there so it's more than a second so you could potentially have all of this in less time like half of the time and see how it feels especially because you said that you wanted to try a few cartoony things and the one of the best ways to try cartoony, according to one of my mentors, is to start doing things in less of the time. So what he did, he was working in ILM and he had gotten a job at Blue Sky. So he was very used to doing very realistic things. And suddenly he had to do very, very cartoony things. So how do you do that? So what he did, which I still say to myself, one day I will try that, is he took one action, let's say, I don't know, picking something up. And first he animated it how he usually would, with the timing that he was used to from doing realistic things. And then what he did was, okay, what happens if I do it in half the frames? And he reanimated it. And then, okay, what happens if I do it in half the frames? And he did it again, so much so that at some point, he got to like the minimum amount of frames that you need. It could be just three frames. And then you have to play with smear frames or multiples or whatever it is that you want to play with, like stretching the body, whatever it is. And, oh. <laughs> so that's something that you could try for this. You could try to do it in half the frames and see how it works for you. Um, Cause yeah, I agree. Like right now it's not that it's a bad animation what you have because it works, but if you do it in half the time, it's going to have a nice rhythm to it. Yeah, it's a really good exercise. I've been saying to myself, I will try that. I learned about this exercise in class three. I graduated AM over a year ago and I still haven't done it. But I will at some point. Maybe that's something that we can do on the stream. If you guys want, we can do a demo one day. A demo. Kind of like a learning together where we take an action and we animate it in different ways. And we see how to do it. Or I could prepare it so that we don't spend all the time animating on the stream. Because I'm not Bo and I don't plan on spending 10 hours on a stream. I like sleeping. So yeah, yeah, we could definitely get that going.
and it would give me an excuse to practice <laughs> and do things for myself. Um, so here, when you're moving the arm up, whichever arm it is that you're moving up, in this case, it's this one, make sure you connect it a little bit more to the shoulder and you lift that shoulder up because all of the motion that happens in the arm starts in the shoulder. So if I'm going to move up, see how my shoulder moves up? So you need to add a little bit more motion to that. Unless you're doing a dance where you can do things like this or like you're doing archery where your arm goes up but your shoulder stays down, that's different because those are very specific type of actions. In something like this, which is very normal, move it up. When you lift the foot here, uh, I would try to add a little bit more foot break. I can't remember exactly the name of the control. I think it's foot break, the attribute, because you have foot roll, which basically does this, and then foot break, and the angle of the foot break allows you to kind of bend at the toes. Hey, Sarah. Um, and right now what's happening is that you're lifting the foot like that when you could add a little bit more nuance to it and bend at the, I can't do it with my hands, but bend at the fingers and then lift the foot. That one. Yeah, yeah I remembered something. They are called so differently in every rig that I forget the names of everything. When he starts uh, running, I would try to at least on the first one get a straight line here so that we can feel him pushing off. And the way that you can do it is with our trusty foot break. He could have a little bit more foot break. He could also be slightly higher up. And that's a way that you can deal with that. Also, um, if you have any questions, if I'm going too fast, if anything doesn't make sense, let me know. Here, I would, let's say this is your kind of full contact. Yeah, I would already flatten this. You don't need to have the heel and then the whole plant. If you look at people running, when you run, you don't really have that much of like the straight and like the straight contact and then the plant like you have in in walking. And a lot of people even when they run, they run with like tip tiptoeing rather than heel first. I think, and this is just me um applying knowledge from the little bit of exercise that I've done in my life. I think it's because if you do it with your toes instead of your heel, then your knee doesn't get all of that uh, energy. And so it's less, yeah, exactly. For this, it's okay because it's an animation. We don't care. You can do the other run where it's like when you run so fast that you don't even, you just plant the foot. You don't even, you just plant it completely. So that's okay. Just don't have it first heel and this either planted completely or he runs with his with his toes let me see something also Also check your spacing, because right now, if you see this, it was going up and then, oops, let me just track everything so that it's easier. There we go. If you see the spacing, um, whenever we change direction on 
anything, depending on the mass of the object, um, this will be more or less. But every time we change direction, we slow down and then we speed up. And right now what's happening is you're slowing down here. Um, I'll let you know, it depends on what time we finish. We, I might open it for reviews, but it's, it depends at what time we finish today. So I'll let you know. If not, just send it to me on Discord or don't, don't send it to me on Slack because I haven't been opening it in months. <laughs> so or send it to me somewhere else. Um, yeah, I know. So here, see how suddenly the spacing gets super, super big and then it slows down. It needs to be actually the opposite. So in this frame, it should be easing out of that movement and then it can speed up. And even here, you could have him go slightly higher a little bit yeah and whatever i'm saying let's say i'm just saying it for one arm in one specific moment i want you to take what i'm saying for this and apply it to the whole animation so let's say i just told you about this whenever we change direction we kind of this is our spacing it slows down and then it continues i want you to apply it to the whole animation so that you go through everything and be like okay where do i need this where is it going because maybe i missed something but this is where you go like okay, i've learned this thing or maybe you knew it and you didn't remember whatever now you apply it to everything and Another thing with this concept of um, slowing down and then speeding up, if you remember the bouncing ball when uh, it's bouncing and changing direction, you can also apply the same concepts to this feeling. So like, for example, let's say I am throwing something and I'm throwing it and then I'm releasing and I'm relaxing my hand. It means that my hand is going to slow down. So, for example, when a ball bounces, if it's just bouncing normally and it's slowing down, the frame before the contact is going to be bigger than the frame after. Why? Because it's losing energy. So it's kind of the same idea with this. If this is your extreme, and you're kind of losing energy, what you can do is the frame before that extreme is bigger than the frame after. And that's something, again, that you can apply to your whole animation every time there's a change in direction. Think about, okay, what is happening? Is it suddenly, is he jumping? If he's jumping suddenly, this uh, spacing is not gonna work. It should be the opposite way. If this is your extreme, ah, no, delete. If that is your extreme, this could be your frame before. And apparently, deleting things does not delete them. And this would be your frame after, where it's gaining energy. Awesome. Glad to hear. Let me turn off ghosting. And then for this part... Oh wait, I wanted to see something with the arms as well. I would maybe, because it's, it's like a really nice pose in terms of how high the arm is coming, but maybe this arm in, in this one, I wouldn't bring it so high just because it feels like you're going from the same pose to the same pose because it feels like this pose is exactly the same as this one. So a little bit, um, of variation. Um, I'm not sure. Anush, is are you doing this at AM? Is this body mechanics or advanced body mechanics, or were you one of the self-taught people? I can't remember because my memory is really bad. I'm sorry. 
nothing to do with you. It's just I suck. <laughs> On your own. Fantastic. Then this is whatever body mechanics he's at in his own life. <laughs> yeah, anyone who is self-taught is already amazing like this i would have never done it on my own i i i i'm impressed because this is very very good especially for someone self-taught and i'm not saying that, i'm just saying it because you don't have the same resources as other people it's like whoa incredible okay let me look at this part I think my issue with this part is that it feels like he suddenly slows down a lot in this jump. It feels like he was coming with one speed and then he slowed down a lot. It could be the camera because the camera is suddenly catching up with him, but it could be that basically he was coming with one... Um, one speed and it suddenly slows down a lot so what i would recommend for next time let me just track this yeah especially because it feels like he just goes back for next time what i would recommend is try to fix this with might be the camera um but also post uh the camera version and a version from the side view for a little bit further away so that we see it all so that we can see the spacing just to double check if it's the camera or something like if we need to cheat it to camera or if it's something that's happening from the like world space so just post the two version oh yeah animation is a struggle forever um yeah yeah i I agree with he could make it higher, but I think it's also there's something with the camera that's not helping in terms of the the translation. I think yeah, as um, Danish is saying, you can make this a little bit higher if you want, because that will help with it not feeling so slow. But I would double check the translation because it feels like f the translation forward is uh slowing down too much yeah exactly it's always a good thing to do it even for yourself here i would try to as he's jumping a little bit, try to drag the head a little bit. Not too much, but just a little bit, because right now it feels like the torso and the head move as a unit. They're rotating back exactly at the same time. So if you drag the head a little bit and even rotate it down, uh, it's going to give it a little bit more texture. And even here, as he's coming down, you can drag the head up rotate it up a little bit so that again as you're falling there's just a little bit of uh your head kind of reaching that energy and momentum that you had a little bit later oh yeah i remember that was one of the things that you told me thank you for saying it again <laughs> basically for the spine and the head it deep it's the way that I like to think about it is first, yeah, spines are very hard. I like to think about it first from the reference, see what my reference is doing, because maybe naturally it already informs, informs me about what it is that's happening. And sometimes it's like, maybe there's like a tiny rotation, I can just make it bigger. But then basically what you want to avoid is the torso and the head all moving and rotating as a unit. Because we can rotate everything at different times and in different ways. And sometimes it's as easy as 
offsetting the rotation. So first, the let's, let's say you're going up. So the chest goes up, my head rotates back, and then it rotates up. So it's like one, two. It's one after the other, rather than everything moving at the same time. So that's a way that you can think about the spine. Um, I think that overall what you have is pretty good. It's just a few areas where the spine and the head feel pretty much moving as a unit. Like for example, here, everything is rotating at the same time. So let's say I'm going to dive. I want to look at where I'm going first because I want to make sure that, that what is happening to him is not happening. But it could, like in this case, you could, uh, instead of him aiming correctly, it could be that he jumped with his eyes closed. And that's why he suddenly falls. And maybe as he's dropping, he opens his eyes and that's when he sees his mistake. So he could close his eyes in that area. But around here, let's just look at the end. What you could do is all around here, he could already be rotating his head down a little bit more and his neck so that you don't have the whole body just rotating it as one. And then we talked about this part. I would just do a pass on it first before I give you more notes because I want to see how you tackle this change. And then if you want to do this cartoony, what I would do, which is uh, something that we had to do in, in one of the cartoony workshops, is uh, analyze movies that are very, very cartoony where things like this are happening. So that you can see and get ideas on what to do. Because I remember you saying you wanted to make this a little bit more cartoony. To make it more cartoony, the motions need to be faster. And depending on how cartoony you want to go, that's when you start using multiples, like for example, multiple legs or um, smear frames, which is when you just do something like this. Considering the style of shot that you're doing, I would say instead of going Hotel T, I, and let, let's say here you have Hotel T, and on the other side you have, I don't know, ILM, Jurassic Park, and over here it's Tangled, which is stylized. I would say you could be somewhere around there where it's stylized, but a little bit cartoony. Why? Because the rest of your shot it's not cartoony. So pushing the cartooniness at the very end will feel a little bit like the style is not, like you're not setting the style. You're just mixing and matching midway through because you wanted to, and it doesn't flow that well. So I would, what I would do is, you can speed all of this up a little bit of him doing this, and that will give you the chance of doing a little bit more of this swimming in the air motion so that you can do at least another one. Because right now he's doing only one. If you can do another uh, set of like the arms moving and the uh, legs, that's going to also read better because you're going to understand what is happening. And then as the legs drop, try to not drop them both at the same time. One of them can start dropping sooner than the other. So this one can stay here for a little bit longer. And this one can drop faster so that one drops before the other. Why? Because right now they're both moving at the same time. And what's happening is they are basically twinning. Maybe they're not exactly in the same pose, but the movement is twinning. So if you do one, it stays there for a little bit longer. It's like toot, toot. that's going to give it a little bit more um, a different kind of rhythm and texture. I think those are the main notes I have for you now. I would, I want to see first what you do with that area where I would, I suggested changing it. And 
after that, let's say you change that and you apply the notes, since you are in spline, I would say move on to polish. Do as much as you can um, and polish as much as you can because you're not that far from there. Like you're very, very close. So I would basically track everything if you use motion trails or Animbot's motion trails, which in my opinion are better track everything with a motion trail, make sure everything is in arcs, your spacing is working, make sure nothing is going through the body, like all of those things. And for this first pose, now that I'm seeing it, um, you could try maybe a different type of pose, just because right now everything feels very even. So, they, again, this is just a suggestion. You could potentially have him. Maybe he's leaning on one of the legs and then this leg is straight, but this one is a little bit bent. And then that shifts like the contrapposto means that this the hips are like this and the chest is in this other angle and that means that the head is also has a little bit of rotation in C, just breaking it up a little bit. Or if you don't want to change the body, at least the head could have a tiny bit of an angle and the neck could be slightly more forward because it's a little bit too far back right now. So slightly more forward. Um, so, do you have any questions or anything that you want to go over? Oh yeah, I know Dave. Cool, good to hear. Wait, what's your name? Do I do I know you out outside of here? It's like I know a lot of people from AM. <laughs> awesome. Great. So, see you next time. Okay, next we have Jacob. You here? Thank you. I'm trying. Yay, awesome. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> We're trying, we're trying. Um, so I already left because some maybe, notes maybe as I did with the other shots and I'm gonna go over them now, but let me play it for because everyone. Because maybe I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. No. No, maybe I'm not. Yes, you are. Maybe I'm not. You are. Maybe I'm not. Okay, so I because only... Because maybe I'm not good enough. Yes, you are. No. Yeah, I remember it too also because of his struggle with the head rotations. <laughs> I remember being like, how do I write head rotations? Um, so you told me up to this shot, not the last one, right? So up to here. So I have a few notes and a few things that I tracked here. So the first one, yeah, it's really nice. The first one is for me, this motion here at the beginning where she flicks feels a little bit too fast. Oh, wait, we were... Oh, you started AM when I left. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's so cool. Well, congratulations on finishing up AM. Good for you. It's, it's a struggle. Nice to meet you too. So I would slow down this motion, the one that is from frames 13 to 23, mainly because it feels too quick and the rest of the motions are because too quick because then she goes into the head shakes that are a little bit too quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I would make this a little bit more gentle, um, it, whether it's just not having this be such a big motion or adding frames. I think maybe I would add frames just because you're free to do whatever you want with this shot and you could just add a little bit 
but aside from that you could potentially have this rotation not be as sharp so here she still has her head a little bit rotated and then she goes into this because right now you're staying in that same head rotation for from frames like 18 to 21 so that's a lot of frames doesn't seem like a lot but it's enough for us to feel like she's in the same rotation um oh no it, it, i got my work in the showcase i think that's what he means if feature student was a thing back then like every week there used to be a feature student now i don't know if they do that anymore that much yeah oh yeah i think i i was featured in the in there as well yeah i think it's kind of random they just put some random three people hey yes i'm there <laughs> um then uh this is i know that uh you're still working on this but remember to do a benbow pass because you know me and I, I will freak out if you don't do a Benbo pass. So just remember our good friend Benbos. We love them. They make Aya less weird. Because she looks so weird. And then here, I feel like once she gets into this pose. Yeah, I know. Do you have the are you, are you do you have her which version do you have because you know how you can turn on the correctives there's like if you turn them on and or off i can't remember which she's slightly less bony like slightly you could try that it is very tiny and slight doesn't really change that much but it it's worth it um i think you might already have it on though here when she is in this pose i feel like she's not looking yet yeah, i don't remember if it's on or off there's one that makes it a little bit better she's kind of not looking anywhere and it feels like it's not even that she's looking into the horizon it feels like the gaze is doesn't have a reason to be right now so potentially what you could do is just lower so that she's more introspective and she's looking down that could be an option or it's the other option is maybe not have her so quote-unquote cross-eyed just so that if she's looking for a head into the distance then your eyes don't cross so much right now they feel very close together And then one thing that I've just noticed because I'm scrubbing through, um, check your arcs on the nose because here she's rotating her head completely horizontal. You need to add an arc there so that it doesn't feel so horizontal if you track the nose. Here I, I wrote to myself, lead with the eyes just because you're starting this motion while she has her eyes closed what i would do is maybe since you have um oh cool thank you i'll check it out later uh since you have so many frames where she's just looking and even her eyes are looking up you could shift that blink a few frames sooner so that by here she's fully open so that she leads with her eyes her eyes move first and then her head goes because right now it feels like she hasn't even thought about whatever is she's thinking and her head is fully in that position wait let's go shot by shot So here, your dreaded head shakes. I want to go over something. Ah, no, I want to zoom in. Why can't I zoom in? Oh, what is it doing? Here we go. Okay, 
So I was tracking the head, the nose in particular, and what I noticed is that your arcs and spacing are still a little bit off. So right now she is, let me just track this as well. She suddenly bumps and kind of um, bounces to the other side in one frame. And then she's doing this and then this, and then she comes down and up. So she's doing this. So it's a very complex arc for such a tiny movement and short amount of space. Oh, please feel free to say about the like jump cat and thing. Oh, you, oh yeah. Now that you say it, it makes so much sense. Yes. That's very true. You like you you seem to be good at seeing uh what's this framing things so if you have a, a suggestion on how to fix the framing that would be good maybe because the reason why it feels like a jump cut it just feels literally like it went really close like it went closer and in the same position in the same yeah exactly same angle same everything so you could just rotate it a little bit, rotate the camera a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I like the framing, but if not, no, because this is a, like, this is a good shot because we can see him coming and everything. Or it could also, you could also, aside from, yes, changing the angle a little bit, which, it's a little bit much. You could also frame it a little bit closer. There you go. People are giving you great notes. I suck at cameras. So what they are saying, yes. Because now that they said the jump cut, I can't unsee it. I can't unsee it. Ah. Also, this is not continuing from one shot to the other but we're going to talk about continuity in a little bit because between shots it's not the the continuity is not great so right now um yeah one of the suggestions that these lovely people are saying i would try them <laughs> so Thank you people for giving out great suggestions. So let's go back to this. Yeah, it's a really good shot. He's very good. Like if you see his previous work, ugh, so good. So here, what I would do is try to have a little bit more of arc, an arc on the whole area and just check your spacing because for example, here, it suddenly pops up. So actually the nose could be around there. So again, same thing as I was telling um, Anush, you just slow down, like you ease in and out of that direction change, especially with the massive size of Aya's head, which is huge. And I Personally, I would try if you can find a way instead of having this type of arc, if you can somehow make the arc do this, that would be ideal. And it could be just a matter of adjusting her neck rotations or if you want to cheat it, just translate her head. I, th I think you can. I can't remember with Aya if you can translate her head and the neck will follow. But if not, it's just rotating the head and it could be that you have to tweak it a few frames earlier. And then here, for example, it's coming up and then it pops down and then it stops. So you need to just do another pass on that spacing because um, I know that you can do it, 
So I want to see how you do it yourself with me telling you where the the problems are. And then if it doesn't work, then we can see it next week. Mainly because I know you can do it. And I know you can take what I'm saying and apply it to great things. <laughs> I think we're all in that. Just hire me, please. Because there's so many talented people everywhere. And then, for example, here, her head just stays in that angle in terms of rotation in X. And then it pops down. Then once you get to this, it's all working except here where it gets a little bit flat. But it's this part where you just need to check um, the spacing so that it doesn't suddenly pop. And I think that's what's going to help you with those head shakes, because that's the main area where I noticed something was a little bit off. And before I go and analyze this shot a little bit further, I want to go to the other one just because there were things that I marked and I don't want to forget them. So in terms of the connectivity between shots, right now what's happening is that if we see this shot from this, aside from the shots being the same angle, um, two things are happening. If you see where his arm is in this shot versus that one, it's in a different pose. It needs to be in the same pose because if not, it feels like something happened in between. And then from here to here, if you see she is rotating her um, chest sideways, you see that rotation. Suddenly here, she's just ro translating down. It needs to connect a little bit more where she finishes that and goes into the other rather than in one she's rotating and on the next one she's already rotating down. And then on this one is the, the one where I <clears throat> notice it the most. If we see, for example, the knee, her knee here feels very close to her body. like the angle between her body and her knee is very, very steep. Versus here, it feels like she's more relaxed, like her knee is closer to the ground than it was in the previous shot. Just make sure, even if, let's say, it's exactly the same pose, if it doesn't feel like it is, you need to cheat it so that it feels like it is. No, trust me. I. I know so many people who are way too... I'm, I'm just struggling through life, through animation, and trying to figure out how to do things. And other people are doing incredible things that I need to squeeze their brains so that I can understand what they're doing. Then um, the other continuity thing is his action here. So, for example, he is moving that way. See how his body, his head, everything is moving in one direction. But when we switch to the other one, he's suddenly moving up. You need to continue that, that translation and rotation and then move on to the other one so that it flows from one to the other. Thank you. You guys are so nice. But I'm not. You should see what I do at work. It's like there's there's this... If there's one person I would recommend following, let me just write his name here that guy is the, like an incredible animator there's he does something there, there's an appeal to his animations that it's one of those people where you can pinpoint he did that shot like sometimes i'm scrolling through my work um we, we have a thing called shotgun where you can see everyone's shots i think now it's called shot grid and uh, you can see everyone's work. I can see from the thumbnail that it's that guy's shots because they are just so good. Sometimes I scrub through them trying to understand what, like, what is happening. How did he do everything? It's amazing. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are very nice.
yeah, no, you guys should see what I do at work. It's just, no, like everyone at AM is doing incredible work. I, I'm not, at, at, especially because at work, you don't have as much time. But let's start for, from there. But also, because I need to learn so much. Like I'm trying to share what I know, but I know 0.1% of the knowledge in the world about animation. Oh, and then be careful here. Uh, you, you're cutting through the knees, very obviously. <laughs> Just fix that. Um, so yeah, I hope that th did it make sense in terms of uh, how to think about the continuity between shots so that you flow from one to the other. Because this one, for example, from her, it works really well. She's turning and then she finishes the turn of her head on the other shot. So that one works really well. But the, on the other ones, I would tweak it a little bit more so that it matches very nicely. Then let me see my other notes that I left. Awesome. Then here I wrote simplify R Z, and I mean it on the on the guy's head, because right now if I play it through, it kind of feels like you're rotating that way, and then too quickly rotating the other way. So maybe more than simplifying is just stretching that rotation in Z so that it doesn't feel like he suddenly went whoop. Because that's the feeling that it gave me when I played it, that suddenly it just kind of did a wobble with his head. So you can have that a little bit of drag and then the change in the rotation, but it's happening too fast. So just make the like, grab it in the graph editor and stretch it for a little bit longer so that it's way softer and then let me see my other notes oh yeah so this note that i left for myself here which is that she like basically rotating her head a little bit more screen left what i mean by that is if I played with the sound, this area. No, maybe I'm not. Yeah. She says, maybe I'm not. And in the not, she's kind of maybe I'm not. starting the motion to the side. And I feel like you can ex accentuate that maybe I'm not. And the not, not, that's the, like, she's already more, screw, more, to the last pose. She's favoring the last pose a little bit more so that it feels more like she's accentuating with the head. Because right now she's saying, maybe I'm not. And finishing the word when the head finishes the movement, I would uh, move the head a little bit faster. If it feels too fast, because it could, um, because right now all of these rotations feel really nice. So if it feels too fast to suddenly do this, you could just tone down how much sideways she looks so that the the uh, movement is more contained, but she still accentuates where the word is. It depends on you, like whatever it is that you want to try and see if it works. Then this, I know that you have it in the rest of the shot, but I would still keep this feeling of the eyebrows more like sad because right now she feels a tad like puzzled or something like where I can't do it with my eyebrows. I have no control over my eyebrows or what they do. Uh, but I would try to keep her in her suffering face. And then uh, the comment of every single person who uses Aya translate that head move that shorten that freaking long neck because it's so long her neck makes no sense why is her neck so long why why are all the rigs like this all the rigs have very long necks so what we do 
we either trans yeah she's a, she's a giraffe um you can yeah you can either translate the head down or um translate one of the or the two neck controls whichever you prefer yeah exactly not in the rig that we're making um yeah exactly i I 100% agree with what Danish is saying. I honestly haven't been looking at the face so much because it's I'm guessing you like you haven't started splining on everything so I haven't really looked at it yet. Um but I agree. I think there's things that you can do. Yes, we might be. Maybe. Um like for example here this eye could be a little bit bigger than the other so that you're opening up the face that way. We're doing things, animation things. <laughs> um, then here I wrote shoulder love. What I mean by that is no, right now her not. shoulders maybe I'm not. feel like they're always no, down. Maybe, I'm not. maybe when she says, maybe I'm not, there could be like a tiny, eh, where, like I, I'm very confused because I see my face and it's all swapped. So it's like, with this one, like maybe I'm not, and a little bit of motion there. Why would you get banned? Did we? Is it all? Did did someone post something already in the Instagram? Can we start sharing our things? Because that would be cool. I'm, I'm constantly looking. Um, I should add this to the list of links that I'm gonna share at the end of the stream so that people can follow us wherever. But I don't remember where I left my links. Ah, there. Okay. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you post a link in your own stream? How dare you? <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate the follow. Um, since we're talking about following, I'm I can share all the links that we have. Yeah, me too. I, I I can only manage our Instagram and that's already too much and I'm not even doing a good job out of it. So um yeah, I also shared the YouTube channel. We are going to upload all of the streams that we do here also on YouTube so that you can just find them there when Twitch eventually deletes them from existence. If I'm managing to actually record this, because supposedly I am. And also we will have um, podcasts, which will be basically whenever we do um, interviews or specific panels, we will just put the audio as a podcast as well. Not for reviews, because it feels a little bit pointless but for the rest that's also something that we're setting up we just don't have any now so that's it seems pointless to share it um where were the other notes continuity we talked about this oh here in this shot i feel like aya's face it feels very different from the rest of the shot and i think it's mostly her eyes because um if you see here she always has the kind of disney-esque type of eyes where it's mostly the upper lids that are roundly shaped whereas here it's starting to get super rounded in this part and it's i don't know it just feels not not of model she's very on model but she feels like she suddenly like all of the stress and anxiety that she had punch her in the face right now and she's like feeling it all which is not a bad thing but it doesn't go so much with the rest of the shot so what i would do is basically you can just lower the corners so that it feels a little bit more round less round at the bottom yeah that's true the lower lid is touching the iris which 
um, you could have it so that it doesn't basically avoid in tangents. I can't see it so much because my screen color doesn't let me see that very bright yellow that well. So thank you for pointing that out. But I think also you need to spline more of the faces. So I'm going to wait until you see until you do a pass on it so that we see where we're at. And then the other note was here. I said too harsh basically because uh, he's moving backwards and stops too harshly. No, you are. He suddenly like did boop and stopped there. So just soften that transition, that, that transition, that end pose for a few more frames so that he doesn't just end there. You can even overshoot a little bit and come back in terms of the rotations that are happening in the body and the shoulder, all of that. And then here I was tracking the nose because I feel that her nose suddenly goes completely straight down. In theory, yes. I am recording just in case. And also we have now put the setting correctly, supposedly, so that it uploads to Twitch. I saw that Dan, uh, Dan's stream from yesterday is already uploaded to Twitch. And I think it was automatically. Dan, you can confirm or deny what I'm saying. So it should be all recorded. And I'm, we're also going to upload to YouTube. So that worst case, if it um, disappears, it will be there. Yes, awesome. Yeah, it could be. I honestly, I can't see that well because of the colors of my monitor. I can barely see that yellow. So I'm basing it off of what I'm hearing. Um, I wish I could see it better. Stupid monitor. Um, awesome. Yes, we're going to upload it everywhere oh be careful here it's going through her leg hey allison welcome nice to see you okay so what i was saying here her face and her nose move very vertically down so i would try to add an arc to it oh. just so that it doesn't feel so vertical down Arcs are our friends. We love arcs. Yes to arcs. Okay, so let me see everything. Because maybe I'm not. Oh, yeah. I remember there was something that I wanted to say about him that I was forgetting. Um, I'm not sure yet. I will see when I finish. I, I probably won't just because. Um, I haven't had dinner yet and I will be hungry, <laughs> but uh, feel free to post whatever links you guys want for review on the Discord channel. Yeah, there's always tomorrow, but also feel free to post them on the Discord channel in the feedback channel because if I have time at some point after the stream, I can go over them or anyone can go over it and give feedback. It's not just me or Daniel or Madison, like you guys can also give feedback to each other. Um, but feel free to post it there. And yes, because I, I, I'm not the best at remembering. I have links in my email of things I need to review, and I promise I will at some point. I just forget. Okay, now I need to go over the things that I've just remembered that I marked here and I forgot to mention. Me this yeah exactly at some point if the reviews are not that long I for, for sure open it up for extra feedback it's just that today I was going to have an early dinner and I forgot and I'm not Bo I like eating so yeah as much as I like helping people, I also need food. <laughs> so a few extra things that you can do that you 
you don't necessarily yeah you, like it's early though it's like i can it's right now it would be it's 9 p.m here which is early for argentinians to eat food um so things that you can do also be careful because it's cutting through the shoe um for example here i wrote a secondary action if you can understand my handwriting because right now what's happening is all in this first shot that leg is completely still nothing is moving nothing is happening i'm not saying it has to move all the time but maybe here when she's being super tense and doing this head shakes and everything maybe she lifts her toes a little bit and maybe she tenses her leg everything tenses so her knee comes in a little bit more and there's a, like you're telling what she's feeling through her whole body not just with the torso up so if you add a little bit um it would be good why do i always compare to bo because he's the one who's been streaming for super long and we see him not take care of himself that's why i compare myself to bo because he needs to take care of himself and because he's been doing this for longer and I'm kind of the mom of AM and I'm the mom of everyone and I think I'm kind of now the mom of the Prats too where I have to tell them all the time like, hey, do you remember to sleep? Like I even have to do this for one of my mentors. I'm like, I message them. I'm like, did you like remember to sleep? Because you need to take care of yourself. Uh, yeah, that would be cool to have emotes um we should plan some <laughs> yeah and like daniel was saying the other day on the first stream that we did remember to stand up and stretch y yay yes please um remember to stand up and stretch you don't want to have your ribs taken out because they are like you you can't move or do anything so be healthy like work hard but also be healthy um for him sorry that i'm jumping off too much from one character to the other it's just that i'm seeing my notes hopefully everything is making sense and the notes are clear enough um oh i have no idea i hope so uh here i would offset the feet a little bit more because I see that this foot uh, hits before the other one but right now it just feels like there's just one frame of difference between the feet but here they are moving completely the same so the in-betweens are the same that's what you need to offset like you already offset how they start and end now you need to offset how much they move and even the angles, like maybe one foot goes slightly higher, maybe with a little bit of an angle, the other one has less of an angle so that they don't look exactly the same. And also you can um, have some variation in the hands because right now uh, it feels like he's always super tense always with his fists closed so i don't know if you even need to have the fist closed in this pose it feels like it's too tense uh for what's happening i would maybe try to find a more relaxed hand pose for this one and then potentially around here he can turn them into the fist that you have um and it, the, if you basically relax them it, what it will give you is like the opportunity to when he comes down that the fingers can splay a little bit and then curl a little bit more just so that you add a little bit of variation so that it's not like this all the time especially when he's coming down it feels a bit much because maybe I'm and speaking of when he comes down, right now I wrote unit because from 47 to like 65, it feels like he's moving his torso up, everything as a unit, everything moves exactly the same at the same rate 
the same amount, the same everything. So what I would try is maybe as he's coming here, maybe one of his arms maybe bends a little and maybe drags up a little bit more so that you already have a little bit more um, asymmetry in the pose. But also it feels he's being like, he has a really strong core because right now he is, yeah, overlap is so hard to understand. It's the, one of the hardest things. He has a very strong core because he can manage to do this without falling. And right now the only um, link to the ground is this one. So I would maybe bring him a little bit forward around here and even maybe up to here a little bit more forward. Just because uh, it feels too controlled. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then he can get into this one. Just so that um, it, because if not, he would need to f drop much faster. And even once you get in, like he gets into the floor, his body can ever so slightly slide so that if he's coming from this angle because his body would be a little bit more he can kind of land a little bit more that way and as he settles he slides ever so slightly yeah that's a good idea one night one ugh. one hand on a knee might be a nice touch Potentially this one. See, that's what I like about this. It's a, it's a collaborative thing where it's not just us saying, this is what you can do. People share and be like, hey, what if you do this? And it's like, yeah, that's a good idea. And then since we're talking about him, What I would try to do, because right now, if I look at his head angle, particularly here, it feels a little bit isolated how he rotates his head um, without involving his body. So maybe all around here, he still with he still has this rotation, and then as he comes back, that's when he rotates um, in RC and around here here i would maybe close his eyes as well and i would rotate his head a little bit more screen right so that as he's dropping that's when you rotate screen left and try to add a little bit of rotation in x so there's a little bit overlap yeah exactly Yeah, because that's the thing that, like, adding that overlap that Danish is saying um, adds to breaking up the motion that is feeling like a unit, because right now everything moves exactly the same. So if one thing lands and then the other and then the other, you have this type of bounce. Not too big, because it's not like he dropped very, very far. Just a little bit so that it doesn't feel super stiff. And then be careful here on her arms. I'm just seeing it now. That's why I'm saying it. From 34 to 40, she's wrote the, the angle on her arm changes, but her hands stay exactly in the same position. So if you're using IK, just make sure you use a little bit of rotation. You, if you use Animbot, you can put a pivot temporary pivot on the fingers and just rotate the hands slightly so that they are a little bit more connected and it doesn't feel like everything rotates but the hand. And even here when he's moving the foot, the feet, um, you could even uh, offset them by two frames rather than one. So that instead of 
one frame and then the other the foot moves it could be two frames so it's a little bit more of an offset because i'm trying to think of whenever i sit down on anything my legs tend to offset a little bit more so if you do it um i think it's going to feel slightly more like it has a rhythm to the movement also be careful it's going through her leg you, you you should just round those steps at a what's it called when you i can't remember the name of it in english when it's kind of this instead of this just so that you you don't have to adjust the animation you just adjust the no not a corner it's I can't remember the name of it. Let me let me quickly just Google it here to make sure because I think I remember. One sec. Yes, <laughs> this this thing where you just add a little bit of that. I don't know how to pronounce it, so I won't. If you add that, it's going to help. Then when he, this is more of a polish note, but when he lands the foot, you could have it so that it's a little bit more rotated that way. And then as he lands it, uh, pivots from the toes ever so slightly. Yeah. ANO5 is super insane. Wait, you did this in 5? I thought, wait, what did you do in 6? Or are you in 6 now? I'm so confused. What is time? No, you already did 6, right? Oh, okay, that's smart. Very smart. Yes to breaks. Nice. That's awesome. Okay, let me play it. Sorry if there's very loud noises. I don't know if you can hear them through my mic. Then I think that also this motion he has with his torso going back feels a little bit fast. But the reason why it feels fast is because it feels like it stops very quickly and it just lands there. If you're going to go that fast, you need an overshoot. So I would maybe slow it down a little bit more. And try to again think about the ang the arcs and angles of the uh, nose. Maybe here even his head. Like like if you already add that overshoot, it's going to allow you for the head to be rotated up a little bit more. But even here, he could already rotate his head a little bit up. It feels very very rotated down. Um. So I would try to maybe just have this type of arc instead of that because it feels like it bounces here and then that way. But definitely this, maybe what you can do so that it doesn't feel so fast as well is rotating the torso in C a little bit so that even his torso does something like this or Wait, is this the other way? Like this. Because right now he's just going back. You could have a tiny bit of an arc where he just goes sideways and sideways and back. But also I would try to soften how he gets to that because it feels very, very fast. And 
and you can start relaxing this fingers a little bit sooner. Here, um, I would try to add a little bit more connectivity with the shoulder. Right now, you're moving the shoulder down, but the hand is still going up. The shoulder still needs to go up for a little bit longer. Basically, I would keep on having it go up until frame 129. That's when it can start coming down. What is he saying here? No, maybe I'm not. Yes, you are. Maybe. Here, when he says, yes, you are, I would rotate his head a little bit up so that not, it's not just the nose that is doing an arc up, but also his chin and his whole head. And again, here her neck is way too, way too big. Here, um, also check, track your shoulder. Feels like it's going up and down and up and down at the very end. I would just simplify that and just have it come up. And then make sure all of those things that we were talking about connectivity, you follow them in this shot when you get to it. Um, like here, for example, her head angle doesn't match. His head angle doesn't match either. Like try to think about that and think about the motions and everything when you get to it. Especially because, let me see. If I put this a little bit. Not. You are. Maybe I'm not. You are. Maybe I'm not. You are. Maybe I'm not. I would try to also maybe do this. Try to find a more interesting spacing because right now the spacing of that nose feels a little bit even. So maybe she anticipates ever so slightly up and then goes down. Or maybe. Not. You are. Maybe I'm not. You are. Not. You are. Maybe I'm not. Maybe she, when she says, maybe I'm not, instead of just finishing here, she overshoots and then comes out. So maybe I'm not. And then does this instead of maybe I'm not and ends there. Have a little bit of an overshoot. Maybe I'm not. You are. 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 Yeah. So I don't want to look at the face yet. Because I think that with this, you have enough for the... Sorry if it's too loud. People are incredibly loud here. Um, I think you have a lot on your plate with um, the rest of the shot as well. Because this is a very long shot. <laughs> so I would focus on this. And then we can go over the face um, in future weeks. Just so that you focus mainly on the body. Once that is ready, then you can focus on the face instead of having to do everything and deal with a lot of things it's for me i always think it feel it's way better to have the whole body and then the face even when i when i'm at work whenever i spline i first spline the whole body i have the face in stepped and even i see a lot of, of my co-workers sometimes they don't get to a certain deadline and they just submit everything in spline but the face and i'm like hmm cool cool 
we, we think alike. So yeah, I think those are all my notes I have for you for now. Do you have any questions or anything you want to go over? And while you type, I'm gonna check Discord isn't on fire. Cool. Cool, no problem. So I think I'm gonna end, I might end it now. I'm trying to think if, no, I'm, I'm gonna end it. But if you guys want extra feedback on any of your shots, because I might be staying for 10 minutes, but I don't want to give very quick, dumb notes. So if you guys want feedback, post it in the feedback channel on Discord. Let me just repost all of our links for anyone who may have joined now. Feel free to post it there. If I have time at some point tomorrow or over the weekend, I might look over some, but I can't promise anything because I also enjoy some time away from my computer, like a normal person. Go away from your computer. It's nice, it's good. Um, so yeah, does anyone have any questions yes i will <laughs> does anyone have any questions about anything in particular like not feedback but anything industry life why is animation so hard why am i crying all the time why why life uh, feel free to ask them <laughs> oh thank you so much yes we we'll, honestly we haven't thought about a, of a, uh, haven't thought about a lot of these things so any recommendations that you guys have or like for example you um are offering your services as a mod if you guys want to put that in the i think we have a request channel on discord feel free to post them there because we're very new to all of this at least i am so like whatever you guys think that will make this better, things that you think would work better, or I don't know, any suggestions that you may have, please send it. Cause at least I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just treating this as the AM dailies and hoping for the best, but AM dailies extended because uh, now I can spend more than 40 minutes giving feedback to a one person, <laughs> which is always, nice for myself and hopefully for the poor people who have to hear me speak for so long so yeah no problem thank you so much for coming thank you so much for joining us and being here and listening to us rumble about animation so yeah if um no one has any questions then yeah i will go have dinner like a healthy human being yeah so tune in tomorrow 1 p.m pst for madison's round of feedback she's amazing we love her so have a really really nice end of the day bye everyone see ya